Hello and welcome to the XBMC on OUYA Impressions video. In this video I will be taking a look at how XBMC works on the newly released open source gaming console called the OUYA. So what exactly is this little device all about? Well, OUYA started as a Kickstarter project back in July of 2012 and was to be the first open source gaming console ever. The Kickstarter ended up generating about $8.5 million in funding to bring the project to life. So once they actually announced this, um, the people behind XBMC saw what the, what was happening and um, also announced a partnership with the guys making OUYA so uh, that we would be able to use XBMC on this little device. The OUYA is powered by a quad-core Tegra 3 running at 1.7 GHz, has 1 GB of RAM, 8 gigs of internal storage space for games and the Android OS that it runs, and only costs $99. As far as connectivity goes, the OUYA has a power plug, a micro USB, which oddly enough doesn't power the device, an Ethernet jack, BGN wireless, one USB 2.0 port, and finally an HDMI port to hook it up to your TV. The first thing I always like to do is take a look at how long these devices take to boot, and the OUYA was able to load XBMC within about a minute of me turning it on. So as you just saw here, um, I went ahead and pushed the button on the top of it, and that's actually um, because one of the odd things that struck me with the OUYA was that there is a button on the controller and basically between the two thumbsticks that you would think is kind of like the Xbox button where you can use it to turn the device on, but I was actually not able to turn it on and I googled around for a little bit and I never actually found anyone that said that they were able to turn the device on with it, but I also didn't really see anything that said you couldn't, so maybe that was just me, but it didn't seem to work for me. So once the OUYA is done booting, it will get you into the OUYA menu where you can either play um, play your games, discover and shop for new games, or if you go to Make, you can um, run XBMC from there. So I'm going to go ahead and pick XBMC and let it open. And this actually runs 12.2 Frodo, so it is the latest version of XBMC. So the next thing I wanted to test was to see how well the device plays back content from my network attached storage. So what I did is I let it scrap my library and I'm going to show you how well it plays content back. So actually to my pleasant surprise here, as I'm moving through the menu as you can see it, the OUYA performs actually very, very strongly. It lags very little as you're going through and scrolling, um, unlike the PIVOS box that I've reviewed last year. So as you can see here, I'm once again looking at EZA, and I fast-forwarded it, and there's no weird buffering problems or anything. It'll just simply play it. Next I pulled up uh, Garden of Words, which is a 1080p movie with um, flak audio, and this is where the OUYA unfortunately started to struggle really, really hard. As you can see in this video, um, while the sound plays back fine, the video starts lagging behind and eventually loses total sync um, with the audio. So unfortunately, also based on what I saw, the OUYA even struggles with 720p files. Now, um, while it's not as noticeable as it is with the 1080p content, you will definitely notice it and it'll definitely get on your nerves if you're planning on watching like any kind of shows on it. As always, I wanted to see how the OUYA handled YouTube content, so I downloaded the official YouTube add-on from the repository and searched for a video, but unfortunately, as you can see here in just a second, um, when you search, the plugin just crashes XBMC and bumps me back to the, de the desktop. So um, on the first time when I was actually first installing the plugin and searching, um, I was actually able to pull up results and it displayed them to me after a little while, but unfortunately I was never able to actually play back any sort of content at all. Um, it just kind of sat there, it gave me an error, or bounced me back to the desktop like it does here. So I thought to myself, well, this is Android, so there has to be an alternative solution for the YouTube plugin, right? Because, um, I mean, every other Android device does have one. So um, while I didn't spend a whole lot of time searching, um, I didn't see a YouTube app in the store. So um, I, ha I ended up trying to use the browser that was also there in one of the menus. And while I was able to pull up the YouTube website, um, the controller pretty much made it in incredibly difficult to uh, maneuver around on that website. And I, I couldn't even get to the search menu. So after messing with, with it for about two minutes, I just kind of gave up and said, you know, honestly, this just isn't worth my time. I have to admit I was a little bit disappointed about the YouTube thing because I figured if anything this little Android device should have a strong suit, it, I figured it would be with the YouTube plugin. So that was l definitely a little bit of a downer. So up next I looked at how well the OUYA would run Aeon Nox, which is uh, my favorite add-on skin as you can tell because I use it in every video. Um, and again, very pleasantly surprised too, the, the OUYA performed really, really well. Um, as you can see, switching between Confluence and Nox didn't actually take very long and even the menus loaded fast and the interface was incredibly responsive overall, I thought. So 
So changing view types also was not a very big problem at all. Um, the UIA ran really well, and uh, while I didn't test every single view type, the ones that I did test, they worked really, really well. So while there's some good and some bad, this is definitely still very, very much an unfinished or unpolished implementation of XBMC. So while you didn't see it as much um, when I was kind of showing it to you earlier or while I was going through the video, um, the device very, very frequently crashed to the desktop. So um, as you can tell here in a minute, I'll be scrolling around and it just randomly crashes to the desktop and stops working. Um, so that was kind of disheartening. Um, also, as you'll see in just a minute, um, whenever there was a menu that you would use to use um, text input, uh, like the virtual keyboard would pop up, but then using the controller you wouldn't be able to actually move the, uh, the cursor within the virtual keyboard. So if you wanted to do any kind of text input, like when you added your sources or anything like that, you actually had to go in and do that using um, an external keyboard. So I'm not really sure what they were thinking there but the virtual keyboard simply doesn't work uh, currently anyways. So I have to admit, I had really high hopes for the OUYA, especially after they had announced um, to be an official partner with XBMC, and especially after I had seen some YouTube videos where they had shown it off and it was working really well. But unfortunately in the current state that it is, I'm just not 100% convinced that this is the way to go um, for all your home theater PC solutions. Um, so while it's a promising device and it performs really well in the menus, much better than some other low-cost alternatives such as the Raspberry Pi, I simply can't recommend it honestly, um, as it struggles with even 720p content. So um, while I, And while I didn't test it myself, uh, my buddy who let me borrow this uh, Wii to do this video actually told me that it doesn't play any playback any kind of ISO, so if you have a large collection of ISOs, this is definitely not the device for you. So um, although all of that, um, I think we have to kind of look at this in a little bit different way though, because it's kind of like a stepping stone towards something bigger, which is the fact that XBMC is now being taken serious by other companies and is being included in set-top boxes, set -top boxes and devices that are for sale through regularly accessible retail channels. So um, in my opinion, that only means great things for the future of XBMC. But in regards to the UIA, I would say if you want an open source gaming console, you'll get a semi-functional version of XBMC with it, and uh, it's going to only improve over the next couple months if you're willing to wait. But unfortunately, um, if you want something that's going to get you um, something that runs reliably and lets you do everything you want on a home theater PC, or something like you know an Acer Revo, which is one of those ion-based net tops, um, I would simply recommend that you go look for it somewhere else, um, as the UIA just simply isn't quite there yet. So that's it for my Ouya impressions video. If you have any kind of questions or comments, go ahead and post them up below or hit me up on my blog. It's uh, xbmcstuff.tumblr.com and uh, I will catch you on the next video. Uh, Till then.